All Here we right. Go. Back for another happy we are dialed hour. We dialed in. Dialed in. Let's say bow, wow, wow. Oh, yeah, this is a great song from 1982. I this want candy. A, this was a call your uh, request. Hey, Rachel who doesn't Kelly's love that? There. I tell you, I bet she's thirsty. She's coming in. She's coming in front row. <laughs> and that's, that's one There's of the, Brady. That's Good to see you, Brady. Terms. Brady might know that term. There's I don't Jenny. Know. Jenny. Well, candy. Listen, Jenny wants business. Okay, listen, Jenny, we are talking about some good stuff today. Uh, one of them is our closing costs affecting our contracts. Are the closing costs affecting our contracts? Because you, you got some sellers that, that get a little bit uh, hesitant on that. And also, does it make sense to pay off your mortgage, right? Absolutely. So what do we got at the top? Well, just learned a new term. You know, it's funny. You know you're getting older when you're not hip on the new terms. Uh, oh, I've been, I think I've been there, though. David tells uh, somebody that is a millennial uh, that he is thirsty, yeah. and apparently there's a new term. I said she was thirsty. Well, yeah, but I, meant, I was I trying to keep it clean beers. here. I was meant yeah. for drinking beers. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that's not. Apparently, you're not supposed to use the word anymore. thirsty anymore. Nope. That's not it. David Arnett was our lender. Now, Jenny Williams, did you know, do not tell any other men that you are thirsty. That's, that's just what we've we learned. We just tested Zillow. David Arnett was our lender? Good. Hey, perfect. Uh, but uh, getting off that, I'm just, I mean, oh, we're call, becoming I, our parents. I guess parents. I'll have to call you when we get off of here, Jim. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've already come to accept that, that uh, we're getting old and, th and, you know, things are moving past, but we, we try to stay relevant as much as we can. Absolutely. And, you know, last week, big hit. Uh, we got a ton of feedback. All that, all that wisdom we imparted on real estate and what was the wanted, people wanted us to talk about more of was... The crap. The Kylie Jenner. Yeah, Kylie Huge Jenner. Thing. Kylie Jenner. I mean, of all things, uh, Kylie Jenner becoming a billionaire. Who knew, right? Jenny, that's awesome. So Stephanie got in touch with you. That's perfect. Karen Charles, good to see you. Uh, Karen, she so had, did. I know, uh, I saw her earlier today. Th she had three closings that all finished before one o'clock. That's perfect. Crazy, Great huh? job, Karen. But anyway. Now, Jenny, did you tell Stephanie that we did the radio show years ago? Did we go way back? Well, I heard you slept through your radio show. Wait a minute. No. You Hold on, hold on. From what I hear, it was 6 a.m. The only reason she asked me to do it was for the radio voice. Oh, yeah. So I had to be awake. <laughs> King See? of TMZ. Yes. He, he yes. does watch some TMZ, not going to lie. But no, Jenny, is this not true that David would, y'all had it on Saturday or Sunday mornings at what? And Jenny was wide at open. Six. I mean, Starbucks, excited. Woo! Man. Ready to roll. And I was like... That's right. Are we doing this on Saturday morning? Well, you had only been asleep for two hours by the time you had to wake up, right? No, I did have some people give me a hard time on Friday night. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but Well, let's get into some good stuff, man. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, first of all, we're talking about contracts, right? Absolutely. All right, we still got a, a uh, seller's market in, in a large part of the price ranges. Absolutely. So, you, you've got, uh, and you see it on Facebook. Um, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Best radio voice ever. You sound like Wink Martindale to me. You Wink. remember him? Joker, yeah, Joker's Wild and all Joker's those, Wild. right? What show is I mean, Wink, uh, Wink Martindale, yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. But uh, so you've got sellers that are looking at several contracts, okay? So how are they going to pick out the one that's the best? The top price, right? Is that obvious? It's all that matters. Right, to number them. one. Oh, um, the bottom line, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, bottom line, right. So top price and what goes into that is closing costs. So what, what are you seeing right now well, on, on writing contracts? One of the biggest problems we're running into, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you, because we haven't really discussed it a lot, even privately, is it's driving me nuts watching sellers, uh, really the buyers, always asking for closing costs. And there are situations in a very high demand, low supply market, like we're in low inventory to be in real estate terms. Uh, the problem is that when you ask for closing costs just because you want them, you need to need them when you ask for them. And what we're finding is that sellers are getting ticked off, right? Now, whether they should be ticked off or not, it's a different story. But the buyers also got to remember the bottom line is the only thing that matters. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because we, we have done this, you know, and I've been in business for 14 years, been doing this here in Birmingham. And, and this is commonplace, you know, and until this year, this is the first time that this has really become a... Um, 
a thing. Like that's. Well, I think not, it all started with Obama giving everybody a cell phone. But with this mentality, I know that's. I'm being facetious. Well, I just think I think but, you just got several. You got more than one offer to look at. You know, instead of being excited about selling your house, I got a buyer. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Finally got this done. I'm moving. I on. did it. You know, now I did it. I did I it. I did it. Five, ten to look at. So now I'm I'm nitpicking. I'm yeah. getting picky. I don't want to pay these people's closing costs. And things like that, right? Um, so I think that's that's a brand new thing in this market. It is, and and but one of the things people got to think from the seller. If I'm representing, if I'm representing a buyer, I need to think from the seller's perspective to a certain degree, right? Because I need to make sure that if we have ten offers, again, the bottom line only do, all, is the only thing the seller's looking at, and the other thing they're looking at is if you need closing costs. You obviously don't have enough money to do it on your own. Yeah, they almost take it personally. Why am I paying your closing yeah. costs? <laughs> you. I'm not paying uh, yours. And there are situations. Now, one of the questions that was raised, and you and I talked about it, is that a lot of the lenders are getting involved in telling the buyers, hey, go get that money from the seller. And so yes. questions raised, why is why yeah, are the that, lenders getting involved? I tell you, that does happen a lot. And in, in, uh, I'm going to come back to, to an idea in a minute, but I wanted to answer this first, is because a lot of times, let's say if we're we're – Tight on cash, okay? Sure. Uh, let's say we're between, you know, three and five percent, but we can get the five percent, but that's all the money we've got available for the buyer. Sure. Or we could go three percent and and pay closing costs. Well, the terms are going to be better if you put five percent down. So the mortgage looks better with five percent down. So in, in a lender, from a lender's perspective, it's not that big a deal <laughs> because we net it out. The seller nets it out anyway. It's never been a big deal. No, it hasn't. But the problem is we're seeing too many lazy agents, quite frankly, that are coming with listings and going, hey, we want on a 200000 We need $10,000. There's no way your closing yeah. costs are getting there, so you're hurting your buyer. Man, it's a great conversation. I tell you, and I look at this all the time because right now, uh, if you submit an offer with three, four, five thousand. 5000 you know that's that's reasonable. I rarely see those reasonable, yep. right? Um, six, seven, eight thousand, ten thousand is a lot. Okay, psychologically, it's a lot. No matter who you are, I don't care if you're on the high end. Or low now, end. now, now, if you're in a purchase price where ten thousand dollars in closing costs make sense, you don't need that help. Right. You should have the money available to pay for the house. Right. Uh, just being honest. <laughs> being real. But. But you're you financing know, it anyway because the buyer or seller would have taken less probably. Yeah. So I think that that three to five thousand dollar range, and anytime you get over that, I feel I feel uncomfortable about it asking the seller because the seller's going to kick back seven eight thousand. I do see there's some there's one program in particular, Alabama Housing, which is a very low down payment option, and obviously if you're you're going with that low down payment, the buyer needs help, and those closing costs are a little bit higher yep. than any other loan program I've ever seen. So, um, you know. That's one scenario where, you, I, where well, I can see it working, but the problem is they they're not thinking from a your offer. If you if, if your offer is two hundred thousand and five thousand in closing costs, too often the 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 uh, buyer goes, "I gave you two hundred thousand for the house." No, you didn't give me two hundred. You gave me one ninety five, and you got to look at it from that so, perspective. So, what do you think about this going in first, saying, "I'll my bottom line is two hundred. Yep. Okay, I get the contract accepted two hundred, no closing costs, and then coming back the week after or okay, right after i don't right care after when after we sign saying it. you know let's bump it to 205 and you give me five back well i think that's fine you obviously have to worry about appraisal in this environment that we're in but one of the issues that you run into is everybody wants to have it buttoned up because oh i don't want to be on the line for the five what if they don't do it and most sellers will do it but some may may not because there is a legitimate concern of appraisal yeah, and I think right now that sellers are getting top dollar. They're already getting top dollar. So building that back in after the fact may or may not be a good option. That's right. But but at the end of the day, look, if financing the closing costs in, remember, you're financing them in. Do not fool yourself. You're not getting free money. Because if the seller in that under that scenario was willing to take a net one ninety five, you probably could have paid one ninety five for the house. Hey Summer, hope you're doing well. No, young mom, she's doing a great job. I, I, I look at her picture. She is a awesome girl and a lady. My wife gets so mad at me for saying girl. I mean, anyway. That's another sign we're getting old. Yes. Okay? Yes, that's exactly right. Summer Glover, thanks for joining in and watching Here's this. Here's Judy. Making him uh, feel old. Yeah. That's awesome. After, and and yeah. ABC's up there. <laughs> and yeah. Caitlin Brassfield, I said. You had a a a ACB. Yeah, but I like anyway. ABC anyway. But anyway, going back to it, I mean, one of the problems, though, is that these sellers just – are getting mad about it, and I, I think that we should not get mad in well, a negotiation. Well, here and here's the deal, 
And Deegan. You gotta love Sarah Deegan. Hey, hey. I, mean, I don't think I've seen her on here yet, but thank you, Shannon, Shannon Harper. Thanks for coming in. But back to your point about the asking for ten grand. Look, if you guys are writing contracts out there in this market asking for ten thousand dollars in closing costs from a seller, that's not gonna happen. And that is it you, won't need to, you need to call the other side. Call if you're representing a buyer and doing that, call the listing agent because I mean if you've been in the business for very long, you're not doing that, right? Well, and two, I, I think it's one of the important steps, regardless of where you are in the country, is making sure that your agent is in co in communication with the lender in the in that process before you make that yeah. offer. Because I, I told you earlier today, we had a situation where, you know, they were asking for way too much, you know, and I just called up the lender and said, how much are they going to need? They were asking for six. They said, ah, about 4500 Well, the seller's mad. Because they're like, I'm not paying six grand, but they didn't need the six grand, and they needlessly got the seller mad. Yeah, but but the seller doesn't even realize they're getting that fifteen hundred dollars back. Maybe I've seen some agents now writing in that the difference will be a reduction in sales price. Well, good luck with that if you wait to the last minute. That's right, because we we don't want to hear a reduction in sales price two three days before closing. Absolutely. So, so all that paperwork needs to be done up front. Absolutely. No question about that. Well, I, I think uh, I think it's a good time. We we do we are thinking about introducing a new page, right? New Facebook page for the happy hour. Happy hour is going so well. Man, we are blowing up. You, you got know, a call from Mark Zuckerberg the other day, right? Mark Z. Well, yeah, Mark of. Z. I almost sent him to voicemail. Can you imagine that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he called me up, said, "Look, guys, you guys are killing it. Yeah. We, you know, you're blowing up the servers. I mean, we need y'all. Huge. <laughs> we need y'all to 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 get yeah. your own." Facebook page, so we can just do this out of, yes. out of one place. Absolutely. So we're going to be going there in a few weeks. We're going to probably be emailing everybody saying, hey, like that page so you can get notified. We're moving it there. I said, Mark, look, I, I, I know you're busy. Not that Mark. And I know, no. I know you're... Uh, the koozie man is here. I Trey know you are, are, are the... He's a real self-made billionaire. Who? Trey Fava? Trey Fava is, as well as Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not Kylie Jenner? I mean... Mm, not... Uh, yeah. So anyway, look for that in the coming yeah, weeks. Yeah, look for that. Real Estate Happy Hour. We'll have our own page. <laughs> Going big time. Yeah. Yeah, we're moving on up. That's George Jefferson. Come on down. That's Come a, on it's down. George Jefferson. Hey, next next thing. You know, this is something, uh, an article that I found on my phone. I was reading through it. And it's interesting. It's always something that comes up in our business that, that buyers want to know, um, that buyers are, are asking us about. Does it make sense to pay off your mortgage? Uh, well, that's right. Does, does it make sense? Because... Hey, I got the money. Let's hypothetically, I have the money to pay it. Uh, had a parent die or whatever happens that I come into the money or a big bonus. Yeah, so, I got a hundred thousand. I could pay it down. What do I do? Yeah. So what? What? How do you make sense of that? What? What makes sense? Um, so here's a couple things. The first one is a predictable return. All right. If you pay your mortgage down, you know for sure that you are saving that interest rate, right? If your rate is four percent. You know you're saving four percent off the top because you're not paying off the, debt. the top. You're not paying the interest anymore. Okay, so now there's tax deductibility factor, right? Which is bull. Okay, which is a bunch of bull because uh, David, how about so I can get a tax reduction? I'll go ahead and pay interest. Now that's, that's ridiculous. No, no, no. The, I never have understood okay, that. So the one thing I would say to that is that you've got housing expense anyway. You do. Absolutely. It, everybody has it. So, it's a great benefit. So if you're paying eight hundred dollars in rent, you have no tax deductibility. If you pay in eight hundred bucks in a mortgage, you do have tax deductibility. So that is That's right. actually I, a good thing because it's a good benefit though, it's side benefit. You know, housing is not a luxury, right? You have to you you gotta live somewhere, right? You're paying for it anyway. Last time I checked. That's so, right. So the tax deductibility is it has changed in this past year um, with a standard deduction going up. So if you're Typically, writing off, let's say, I don't know if your itemized is is twenty seven thousand. Well, right now, because you're itemizing twenty four thousand off the top, now it's going to yeah. be deductible yeah, so as 24, a standard. Twenty four is now standard. So if your total is twenty seven, you're only getting the three three thousand dollar benefit. So all those numbers are different now with the new new law. So talk to your CPA about that. But let's just look at other investment opportunities. Okay? I love that. So, so what else can you do with that money? Let's say I got two hundred thousand dollars. Go on a nice cruise? It, yeah. Well, oh, you can go cruising for a while. It's a great investment. Great investment. So you got two hundred grand, and I either want to just pay the house off or I want to put it somewhere else. Yeah. Now, right now, and these rates are coming up. CD, five-year CD, I look today, 3%. My money's stuck for five years, though. 
Money stuck for five years. Yep. That is true. Another thing, another good point, I was talking to somebody today about this, is that if you're if you run into problems, all your, your house is paid off, okay? And let's say you run into an issue, uh, need the car fixed. Well, you can't pull the door off of that house and go pay for the car to get fixed, can oh, no. you? Well, you, you the, might get, yeah. No. You can't get to the cash. No, Okay. that's right. Uh, let's say you lose a job and you can't get approved for the loan. Right. So that's, that's one thing. That's one issue. But anyway, back to the CD. Five-year CD, 3%. Um, the money is tied up. Yep. But a CD is about the safest, most guaranteed investment out there. I'm guaranteed to have that money in yeah. four years. Now, I did look at some numbers. Average mortgage rates over the last four years, over the last ten years, okay, are four point three percent. So you're paying four point three percent on the money. Thank you, sir. Your CD uh, is at five three percent. Yep. Okay. Now, the stocks. If you buy, hey, if you buy and hold stocks, Ben Styes, he is a uh, famous realtor. And trustful. <laughs> That's right. That guy is baseball really player, killer. right? He's doing really yeah. good though, man. I'm proud of Ben. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so arguably, if you buy Thanks, and Lindsay. hold stocks, um, eight percent return. <laughs> so you're going to beat it, right? arguably, right? So you're beating that mortgage rate. Now I did look up a couple of dividend paying stocks. Okay. Verizon at four point six four percent. Yep. Now a dividend means that they're paying you that dividend on the investment. Well, they're every giving year. you a profit. They're, yeah. they're sharing their profits back with their investors. They're sharing their profits. So if you paid off the house ten years ago with two hundred thousand, what's yep. the house worth now? Uh, zero. Well, well, I mean, no, your mortgage balance, what are you saying? Your mortgage I mean, balance it's is worth, zero. It's worth whatever it is. But the house is going to go up oh. regardless. It's going to go up at minimum with inflation, hopefully. But you, but it's it's going to go up regardless of how much you owe, right? That's correct. So, now, this Verizon investment over 10 years, it went from $34 to $52. Okay. That's a 52% return plus the dividend. And let's just say it was averaging that 4 4 4.5% a year. Yep. That's about four hundred grand in ten years. <laughs> so you've almost doubled your money in ten years, right? And I would I would back up that to say, hey, you're not someone's not, you know, I the stock market is overwhelming for most people. I for me, I mean, there's aspects of it for me that are just overwhelming when you get into options and stuff like that. But there are such easy choices out there on mutual funds. I mean, the entire Vanguard family, right? Yeah. The entire T. Rowe Price, uh, Fidelity, Schwab, they all have these easy ETFs, which are electronic traded funds, those type things that can really... And I know and I know this is not as exciting as Kylie Jenner, but... I mean, yeah. This is good stuff. This is quality, but I mean, it, it's real money. I mean, take... but it, So you don't have to change individual stocks is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. You can buy, you can buy uh, exchange traded funds. You can buy index funds. You can buy funds, or you can just give your money... To uh, an investment you, professional, yeah. no, to an investment professional that will Courtney would be laughing at that statement. Oh yeah. So anyway, so I wanted to, I, uh, also on the tail of this, I pulled up, um, you know, some S and P stocks that pay dividends. One of them is Iron Mountain. Some of the S and P five hundred. Iron Mountain S and P five hundred stock that pays dividends six point six five percent. So your mortgage rate is four point three on average over the last ten years. Iron Mountain's paying you six point six five percent. Boring. Okay, bored oh, to tears on what this company oh, does. Oh, absolutely! They store records and data backup. Well, you know, and take I mean, just who take, cares about that? One of one of the ones I'm in is is PCI, which is a Pimco. Uh, it's a uh, closed end fund that basically is trading in mortgage debt essentially, and you know they're paying eight percent on top. I looked this afternoon before we came in, and I'm net fifteen and a half percent up on the year because I'm getting an eight percent dividend plus about a seven percent growth. Yeah. In, in 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 the stock price, so Iron Iron Mountain's up forty percent over the last ten years. Okay, plus the dividend. And the dividend's huge, and making sure you're reinvesting. It's, those go, dividends. it's gone from twenty five bucks a share to thirty five bucks a share over ten years. That's not a big move. Okay, not, not a, a big move. move, but you're making money, and it's boring. No, no, very boring, very boring. Uh, uh, but L remember, brands. by the way, remember everybody can use uh, Robinhood. I'll put a link down below. Free trading. If you want to dip your feet in the fire, it's free. Mark wants us to invest in beer Yeah, for happy hour. Mark, yeah. if you had to invest in one beer, what would it be? Yeah, everybody. What would that be? Uh, Trey Favor, are you here still? Let's see what you would do. Trey might be on there. Trey uh, probably wouldn't pay off his mortgage. He's sophisticated, though, isn't he, beer-wise? Yeah, he's, he's intelligent. 
But L Brands is uh, specialty Corey retail. Corey Smitherman too. Yeah, right. Um, is up sixty percent plus their dividend is seven point seven four. They're still an S P five hundred seven, almost eight percent dividend. AT and T. Now here's the funny thing. AT and T is six and a half percent. Over ten years, the stock is actually down a little bit. Well, one thing. But you're still getting the six and a half percent. Yes, but on the flip side of that, I'm not so sure that. AT&T is not a bunch of drunken sailors out buying stuff they don't understand what they're buying, right, in this consolidation? Because you're starting to see it, say, in the airline industry where the, now you're seeing these CEOs going, all this was probably not a good idea, this consolidation where everybody was merging. So we got trim Guinness, tab. and then Trey knows that it's trim. Oh, Trey's investing in TribTab IPA. Yes. Man. We uh, got we got the Sam Adams up here today. No, no Guinness. Yeah, uh, Guinness I have, to, I have strong. to look that up to see who who Guinness is. See, Corey Smitherman's right on. I, I mean, really, I've seen more millionaires become yeah, Corey, millionaires that, out of mutual funds yeah. and stocks. Yeah, and you know, and I've, I've been told the best way to make money, and I, you know, I'd, I'd love to trade stocks and sit there watching Corey. Actually, admittedly, Corey, you would sit there and trade stocks all day too. But uh, he's right. Mutual funds are the safest way. Buy and hold is the safest. Absolutely. And we, we've talked about it for weeks. Now, what happened to me with World Wrestling Federation, whatever, WWE, oh, WWE. is I bought it at $30 Sky. a share. Great return. They hit earnings earlier this year. They sell it at it. $50. It's at $85 a share now. 85 bucks a share. He's out. He's uh, out, and you can't chase it. You can't chase it, or it'll come right back down. Yeah, it'll boomerang on me. Now, one thing I want to say is the stock market has risk, right? Everybody says that. The first thing they'll hey, say is the stock market's risky. And we've had – your house is we, – we've had a, a, a crash in real estate, right? We've had more crashes in the stock market, but we did recently 10 years ago have a crash in but real we estate. Caused, let's say it this way. We've caused that – Real estate crash, lending, especially on the we on did. irrational exuberance on the buyer side, but the lending guidelines going so weak. We did uh, cause but that. But I'm just saying, there's there's risk out there everywhere you go. So well, you I wouldn't shy away from the stock market just because you feel like you, you it's risky. And I want to make one point relative to real estate is that your home, your home that you live in, should not be looked at as an investment. You should not make that part of your investment portfolio. You should make that because you want to have that as a home, uh, not as an investment. Because if you can rise at three percent or whatever inflation yep. is, now it is it is a wealth vehicle. And if anybody's if, if anybody's doing it right, especially your primary residence, you're getting into a fixed mortgage uh, with some kind of down payment, thirty, fifteen year, you know, fifteen years probably rare, but at least a thirty year fixed. It's going to appreciate, so it will be a source of wealth for your family. It is, but uh, to a large degree, over time, if you stay in it long enough you're going to see the ebbs and flows of the market and it may level out to where you are getting a 3% return year over year which would be fine yeah the 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 expectation that your house grows 30 40% is asinine uh, it's, it's just crazy because you know we've talked about it before that inflation dollars matter so you so your your house pr home price cannot grow 30 40 50% in 10 years Usually not, huh? N not without inflation's help. Yep. Not without everything else costing a lot That's more. right. Everything, the, the same dollar, you know, um, $240,000 in 2006 is now 296000 240 in 2006 is now 296 Yeah, so that same, if I had a check for yeah. 240000 I would have to almost go buy a $300,000 house with that money. People don't want to see it. They want to say, oh, my house increased in value. But your house really didn't increase in value. The dollar is inflated. Yeah. yeah. So when you sell your Things house, cost more. When you sell your two hundred forty thousand dollars house for two eighty, when you go, this is great. I'm making forty thousand. I hate to tell you, you've lost money. <laughs> right. You didn't even keep up with inflation, and so I, I just want the math to be correct for everybody and to understand what a real investment is. A real investment is taking that money and putting it into a ETF S and P five hundred, right? Yeah, and, or, or being like Corey Smitherman and going and buying a total a, a mutual fund that hits all the large caps. You know, like that. yeah, yeah. And another thing that I that I want to talk about is that I feel like when you pay off the mortgage, you feel that fifteen hundred dollars go away, or, or that thousand dollars, or however much you're paying. Right? Gone. It's gone. So what do you do with your cash flow typically? Right, it's, it's going to go down, right? 
Or are so you so paying it? So somewhere. you're going to make less money because you don't owe as much. Does that make sense? Right. So so when you pay that mortgage off, what are you doing with that extra cash flow every month? Yeah. All right. It, is, it, is it going into investments? I don't know, but I think the total picture needs to be, it, am I maxing out my Roth? Am I maxing out my oh, 401k? Oh, definitely right. Definitely. All that before I can even analyze the payoff, right? So if, if this extra cash I have could be used to maximize and, and tap out everything, that needs to be done prior to... Uh, prior to paying something off like yeah, this, yeah, because that's what'll have the long term net effects. Because there's some, there is some safety nets that are in place relative in retirement to your house being able to be taken from you. Yep, you you still got to pay your mortgage. So, any, anything else exciting this week? I know I did hear one one headline about our our buddy, uh, which Carter may not be excited about, but our buddy Trent Richardson, ah, uh, ah. Alabama. Didn't he? Grant, didn't he go to jail one time? Uh, he might have. Running back, Alabama, is going to be coming back to the uh, new football league here in Birmingham. I don't know. It's uh, some kind of uh, D league or something. Oh, you're not talking about anything you're negative. Doing. You're just talking about him joining a team. Yeah, he's well, he's coming back to play. Hey, what? No, I know the, what it was. He C wasted league. a ton of money. No, he's coming back to play on the C league in Birmingham. We're going to have yeah. a team here in some kind of summer league or something they're doing. Well, what I can tell you about the this guy is... Guy gets drafted in the first round by the Indianapolis Colts, makes all this money. What twenty? How do these guys lose hey, all this money? We got Bill Murphy watching. He is the king of Massachusetts. So uh, I appreciate you checking in. I, I now, to point tell me that this: out. How do these guys lose this money? I mean, what was it? Uh, uh, who was that in Vegas that lost? I mean, uh, golly, played for the Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, anyway, take take uh, Mike Tyson loses two hundred and twenty million dollars. Yep, because he's given Land Rovers his party favors at a party. Man, you're talking about our buddy Trent, the Tennessee Titan. No, Trent Richardson is uh, Alabama. Yeah, he's coming back. He's coming back. Oh. I always wanted. I always oh, Mark Carlisle likes it. Roll Tide Roll. I always loved Trent because you could yank him down by his dreadlocks. That's true. Yeah, I mean, he is no he's a tough runner. Yeah, he is. He's no Cadillac Williams, but uh, uh -huh. or Ronnie Brown. See, uh, Bill. Bill, this is what we have. I mean, anytime you bring up Alabama, Auburn's got to ring in, man. Now, it is awesome. Look, we have a great equestrian but Bill's, team. Bill's got Tom Brady, though. So Yeah, but do they have equestrian even in New England? I don't know about that. Auburn I has the best I equestrian team. cold. <laughs> Carlisle, well, Trent, Trent's coming back, buddy. So Man, big – hey, headed to uh, – man, a couple weeks, man, we're going to see Def Leppard and Journey. Here, it's oh, a good I'm uh, going to Counting Crows this weekend. Are you really? Oak Mountain, Counting Crows. That's old Counting school. Mid-90s. Yeah. Mid nineties. That that puts me out there, huh? Yeah. He That's has okay. dreadlocks too, doesn't he? He did. He did. At one point. He matured. He got old like the yeah. rest of us. Oh, Bill Murphy threw us a roll tide. Man, that a boy. I appreciate Man, that. All these Alabama folks. We have a good rodeo it, team. It, that's, uh, that's 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 my uh pe uh Tom Brady up there in New England. Oh, is he deflating things tide. too? Oh, he's just he's just stoking the fire. Hey, did you see Tom speaking of that? I think I have a better Big figure with my shirt off. I saw a picture the other day. They put it all over the internet of Tom Brady. Are we going to test that? I'm just no, no. I'm just saying. Next, maybe next, one week we will. Next but I'm just line. saying. Hey, I'm just. We're, saying. Sh we're strutting this on the next next week. Yes. Anyway, uh, we thank everybody for tuning in this week to the hey, Real guys. Estate Happy Hour. And keep in mind, we're going to be uh, adding us a new page, Real Estate Happy Hour. Just look Facebook for it. Page, page. Look out for it. We'll invite you to come like it. And I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in every Thursday at 4 o'clock. And, thank, and you thank you to Rachel Kelly for teaching us the word thirsty. It no longer means that you're wanting a beverage. That's, that's just new stuff. I'm staying off of that. We'll see you all next week. Yeah, see you later. Bye-bye. Have a good week.